life. Welcome to our service this September 6th, this Labor Day weekend. We're glad to have you all here. And let's see, we got a number of folks. Good to see the Stash family here. A bunch of the Baez is here. And kids, happy to be in church. Amen. And you folks that are watching live stream and on YouTube, God bless you. And uh, let's get ready to sing. What are we saying? Oh, let's do the, I'll tell you what, let's do the private in first. I keep forgetting that. And that's for you folks uh, that are watching live stream. First, right. Help us out with it.
back and sing it. Let's turn to page 348. 348. Isn't it good to sing about being saved? Amen. Yeah. Aren't you glad you're saved? Amen. If you're not saved, that's a bad thing. You're going to hell. We don't want you to go to hell. Remember that fellow we talked to yesterday, Brother Gates? We were out knocking doors and, and this fellow's doing charity work and doing good things and talking about how he wants to help people and this. And Brother Gates just decided to ask him, he said, do you know for sure if you die, you're going to heaven? And he just kind of paused, didn't he? Remember that? He wasn't sure. If you ain't sure, you ain't gone. That's right. I mean, unless you unless you got something something going on. I mean, and salvation is so simple. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. Amen. You don't got to go through some long ritual church thing. You get it. You trust Jesus Christ and believe on him. You can have it. Saved. What a great thing to sing about being saved. What are we singing next? 348. Redeemed. Same hymn on page 348. Redeemed. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth.
of 10, their families are not born again Christians. It's kind of tough, especially around holidays, especially if you uh, had a loved one pass on. But thank God for a church family, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember, wasn't that what Jesus said? He said, oh, your, your, um, uh, your brothers and your sisters and your mothers out there. And he said, don't you understand? He said, these are my brothers. Amen. My brother. And he said, thank God we've got a church family. Amen. And uh, we're, 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 God got something special for you. That's why we do say brother and sister. Because you are our brother in Christ. And it's always good to come home to the family. Be there at the special meals. It's a place of sanctuary. A place should be a place of peace. Not get right with God. And uh, let's sing that one more time. It's about listening to your words. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Tell us a little bit about the family in heaven. Ephesians chapter 3. Someone said a good thing about the family is they always have to take you when you go home. <laughs> Someone asked me one time, why do you put up with so-and-so? Because they're part of the family. I said, deal with it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 15. We'll read verse 15, 16, and 17. It's near that great passage about him being able to do exceedingly abundantly of all we ask our things in the next few verses. We're not going to read them. It's just going to read verse 15, 16, and 17 out loud. But you have to make sure I do it right. Verse number 15. Everybody there still got something there. Which chapter? Um, uh, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 15. It's just good to have everybody read the Bible together. I appreciate these kids want to read the passage with us, too. It's important for kids to read the Bible. The old King James Bible. My daughter wanted to read, and she was five years old. I'm sure she got her chance to read the Bible as a family, too. I don't know whether Judy's helping Selena or the Selena's helping Judy, you know, she was. <laughs> I'm teasing you, Judy. It's hard to turn. Yes, ma'am, I understand that I'm, I'm, I'm teasing you. All right, let's start in verse 15 where it says, of whom the whole family, can you read it with me? Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that he be rooted and grounded in love. Stop right there. God bless you. You may be seated. And this is normally the time that we would uh, have our ushers get ready, but we're, uh, we have the baskets here on the side. And uh, I, I guess we're not going to be in your church this morning. Jonathan, you're doing it. I take back some of the stuff I was saying about you, Brother John. <laughs> so, uh, you young people, 12 and under, uh, you can, uh, after we have the folks come up and bring their, their, their tithes and offerings in the baskets on the side, the kids, 
and you help out the kids now, let them bring an offering and put it in the jar. And uh, we have a special project. I think we're going to give that to uh, the, uh, the ministry down there at Camp Victory. In fact, we've got a bunch of us going to be traveling there uh, Wednesday. Brother Gates is going to be preaching. Excellent preacher. I love hearing Brother Gates preaching. And uh, we'll be uh, down at uh, the uh, family camp. And by the way, in case you I was trying to get folks to plan on it. Next, it's free to go there. Now, it's just like a, it's a rustic youth camp, stay in dormitory, all that kind of stuff. But it's free. They know it wasn't. It's free. They take an offering, but they don't twist your arm. They just pass the plates. They don't they twist your arm about getting an offering. Some places will do that. They don't. And uh, that excellent singing, Brother Griffiths, and uh, I have others, uh, many, uh, several periods. And it's a good time to get together and get away. You want to get away? Get away somewhere where you're going to have a good time with folks and spend time with God. And uh, very relaxing. And uh, looks like the weather's going to be cooperating. I hope so. And uh, we have a teen lock-in September 25th. We're going to lock you in. That's what you want, more lock-in, right? I don't know why they're so excited about it, but from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., uh, I think that's a Friday and Saturday. And uh, those of you that are in the Bible Institute, don't forget your memory verse. You're supposed to, to practice and practice and practice it, and then write it, uh, and uh, you to self-test. And uh, then also be sure you are reading your Bible reading Proverbs and also the uh, uh, Bible reading schedule. I think that's all the announcements that I have. We have services tonight at 6. And uh, appreciate Brother John leading the music for us. Brother Mario is away uh, with his family down in Florida. I think the Navaltas are traveling this afternoon to Hope High Hope. And the rest of us traveling different times over the week. Trying to get our last hoorah in before. Whatever happens next is going to happen. <laughs> All right. Finds a sheep, and in the, in, the, uh, <clears throat> in the last verse, 
It says, and all through the mountains, thunder riven, and up the, from the rocky steep, there rose a cry to the gate of heaven, rejoice, I have found my sheep. Amen. 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 Man, that's powerful, is it not? <clears throat> and the angels echoed around the throne. The Bible says heaven rejoices yeah. for a sinner that receives Christ. <clears throat> And the angels echoed around the throne, rejoice for the Lord brings back his own. Rejoice for the Lord brings back his own. Man, that is, that is something. It is my desire and my prayer uh, that God gets the glory from my life. The song I'm going to sing, if I can get through it, uh, is to God be the glory. Amen. <clears throat>
talking about his kids in his house, and they've graduated and everything. And he said, I wonder, should I be hard? Should I, I say, hey, your hard days are done. Now, they're doing something blatantly wrong. I mean, you know, tell them, tell them the face, amen. Uh, but uh, the, the, those days of, um, and, uh, of spanking, can I use that word anymore? Is it safe? <laughs> uh, those days are gone. Uh, it's, it's encouragement and berating them and uh, making them feel miserable unless you haven't done a job all the way up. Surely they know how you believe. They surely know what the Bible says. Amen. Uh, uh, your, your, your days of uh, the little ones, you got to get that taken care of early. That's you know, right. they, you know why, why it says children obey your parents? Because the time you get to teenagers, if you haven't got that settled, you're in a mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a little thing in the Bible that's called reaping and sowing. Right. I remember telling my kids I couldn't wait till they grew up and had kids. I was going to jump on their furniture. <laughs> the problem is I can't jump anymore. <laughs> Psalm 127. These are like a couplet. They they work together. I'm talking about a successful Christian family. No matter where you're at, it'll still be a help and an encouragement. I mean, you're not many people going to get you. You're not going to you're not going to argue anybody into heaven. You're not going to argue anybody into into doing something. I mean, once they find out where it's all at, you, you argue with them, it's not going to get anywhere. You're not going to win that. You may win the argument, but you lost the battle. In Psalm 127, Psalm 120. They're both very short psalms, but I think they work together in the matter of a family. Now, let me say this was written. Uh, by Solomon and, and uh, written for Solomon here when he was building the temple. And he's talking about building the house of the Lord. But also that's included in this is what we call the home or the family. And uh, in Hebrews chapter 3, uh, uh, Paul talks about Moses' house. Now he wasn't talking about a building. He was talking about his family. He talked about uh, uh, Moses being faithful in his house. He's talking about, yes, there's a house, there's a place there, but he's talking about his family. Same way with Jesus being faithful over his house, it mentions in Hebrews chapter 3. He's not talking about the building. Though there is a lot connected with the building to the church. We say it all the time. It's really not correct, Brother, Brother Gates. We say I'm going to the church. Well, we're, so we're going to the church building where the church meets. The church is the people. And when we talk about the family and the house here, he's going to, he's going to refer to both... Uh, refer to it both ways. Yes, there is a connection to the house. Solomon was building the house of the Lord, and it was very important with that, and there's lessons to learn with that. So, let's see what is said here in Psalm 127 and then Psalm 128. Just a few verses. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Thank God for that verse. I quote it often, especially when I'm taking a nap. <laughs> Lo, children are heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Let me say this, I'm, I'm, I'm already uh, jumping ahead in my message. There's nowhere in the Bible where God said to restrict your family. We're supposed to be having the children, the Christians, the saints of God. And, and, if, and, if, you, and if God doesn't, that's okay. But well, we ought not to restrict our families. That, that, that the fruit of the womb is his reward. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to throw out that verse with the same one that says, uh, ladies, it says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth the favor of the Lord? You tell your husband, he gets good blessing because you're there. <laughs> That's Bible. That's yeah. the truth. <laughs> Brother Gates, you married above yourself. Good laugh. <laughs> we all did. <laughs> the husband used to love to tell me, You married above yourself, stop. Quit, quit being so proud. <laughs> Give this blood of sleep, verse 3. Lo, children are in the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. God blesses children, blesses children with large families. You get a kick out of the, the old 
told, uh, and of course, their great grandparents now, thinking four kids was a large family. They used to ask my dad, so, all those yours? I said, well, yeah. Are you Catholic? No. <laughs> Christian, verse 4. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. There it is again. You want to have more arrows than less. You go hunting, you want more than less. You're in a battle, you want more arrows than less. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. A man that raises his children, right? He's got his children as a, as as as. as Examples and testimonies of, of what he's doing. I think it was Dr. No who used to say, I don't care what you say, let me see your family. I want to see your family. He wasn't interested in how a preacher preached, he wanted to see the preacher's family. That's what he's talking about. Verse 1, 128. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. There it is again. Thy children like olive plants uh, round about thy table. Behold, that uh, thus shalt that man be pleased that feareth the Lord. God's going to bless that family. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. Of course, it's here you get the millennial aspect from the prophecy. Thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children in peace upon Israel. Well, Israel's not there now, but it will be one day. So these two, and i got several things. Well, let's pray. Let's see if we can get some help from that. Listen, listen, before we pray, I never felt like I got raising my family exactly right. Preacher, I always felt like there's something I needed to do a little better, a little more, uh, and thank God for a wife, and thank God for the, the advisors that God gave me to help me. Uh, I don't think I did that great of a job, and I'm not, I'm not trying to play humble pie here. But I tried to do what I could when I found out about it and when I could. And I tried to make the corrections when I could. Mm -hmm. uh, young people, listen, listen. Your parents aren't perfect. We, we know that. We're not talking perfection. Mm -hmm. But God promised to bless them if you, and bless, bless you if you would honor them. And obey it. There's two things, two different things. Let's let, let's look. Uh, let, let's pray. Father, speak to our hearts. Help us in this matter. We are desperate, Lord. This world is is a is an insane asylum, yeah. uh, run by the inmates, God. And, and yeah. the, the, there's there seems to be no restraint and no self control and and the demands of all kinds of things. Entitlement. I'm owed this and I'm owed that. Uh, God, help us to see that we're deserving of hell. But you offered us the free gift of eternal life. And not only that, the gift of a family. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Except the Lord build the house. Verse 1, he said to 127, they labor in vain that, that, that build it. If you're building and you're trying to listen, because you've got a good job and you make good money doesn't mean you're going to have a good house. Right. Even in the matter of building it. We've watched them in different places around the area here building houses and and they build a beautiful house, and next thing you know, all the all the plumbing's ripped out, all the all, all the coppers ripped out, all the wires ripped out. Amen. Yeah. Except the Lord watch the house, except the Lord keep the city, they were making fun in vain. And I'm all for taking precautions. They did. They had a watchman to watch over it. Um, but there's many cities that thought they were impregnable. To talk about Jericho. They thought nobody would be able to get in and touch them. Except, but the Lord wasn't with them. And if the Lord's not with you in your house, your house is not going to make it. I'm talking about your family. <clears throat> the, the, the world, and this, they've got this idea. We had it in school for years. They thought they could take the Bible and God out of schools, and we still have good schools. It's insane. You, the more you take God out of something, the worse it gets. All it can go is to heathenism. That's where we're, and that's where we're at. Well, they're taking the Bible and got out of schools. So how are they doing? Well, they're not even that's so bad right now. They don't want to let you, let you meet. Mm -hmm. uh, this is connected with Solomon. He's building a magnificent building. He, he, 
it was they, they cut all the parts and stones and pieces before they got it to the site. It's an amazing thing that they did when you see the sizes of the stones. And Solomon was aware of it. Solomon started well three times. It's recorded in 1 Kings and recorded twice in 2 Chronicles. And it says this, he wrote, but who was able to build him a house? Seeing the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Who am I then that I should build him a house? You got it right, Solomon. Who do you think you are? Not because you're doing some great thing. And he said, you're going to contain God, and God's going to come and meet with you in this house, and I'll have met with him in the house, I've met with him in all and always, I've met with him, uh, I've met with him in the Ark of the Covenant there, on the, on the, and, and God blessed it, and God honored it. And he said, I can't build God a house. If God's not in this, it's not going to be good. We say it in our preaching. If we preach without God, it doesn't seem like the Holy, the Holy Ghost of God is working. The preaching is just a bunch of empty words like a lot of the speeches you're hearing now. Amen. Amen. Where's God? Where's, is, if God's not in it, it's not going to last. It's not going to count a hundred years from now. But if God's in it, it's eternal. And it will have an effect a hundred years from now. <coughs> well, preacher, how can you keep talking about a hundred years from now? Because you're going to be alive somewhere a hundred years from now. Amen. It's either heaven or hell. Jesus died on the cross so you could go to heaven. Yeah. It's how I believe that. I did too. But I was on my way to hell. I believe the Bible. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe all of that. I was lost because I had never received it. I never called on Jesus and asked him to save me. Well, Solomon says three times, I can't build God a house. God's not in this. We have a house. We have a family. And we have a legacy that will follow us if God tarries his coming. There are some principal parts to building a successful house. The first part is the principles. Listen, I, I, I know I'm not that smart. I don't consider myself to be that, that, that some great intellectual thinker. But I'm going to tell you this. I needed to go over the Bible on a regular basis, particularly the book of Proverbs, on raising children and, and uh, living a, 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 a principled life from God. Because Jesus himself said, Man shall not live by bread alone, your food, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So how do you think you're going to have a successful family if you got a good job and put food on the table? But you don't keep up in the Bible food. Oh, I, I, yeah, I studied the Bible. I went to Sunday school. No, you don't remember all that. I don't. I got, my Bible's got 1,500 pages in it. Does yours have somewhere between 14, 15, 1,600 pages in it? That's all a lot of pages. You got all that down? I don't. You got all of 31 chapters of Proverbs down? I don't. I'm amazed I talked to couples that are dealing with, with the marital issues, and they've never read 1 Corinthians 7, they've never read Ephesians 5, and, and, and they've never read 1 Peter chapters uh, uh, 2 and 3. Well, those are three primary chapters on marriage. And you're struggling in marriage. You've never read them. Why don't you see what God had to say about it? He's the one that instituted it. He's the one that's blessed by it. Promised you a blessing if you would do it his way. Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. That's what Moses told Joshua. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. And thou shalt have good success. <coughs> He said, you're not only going to read it, you're going to meditate on it. I, I know there's a lot of folks like that. that we've got them reading their Bibles through, and they're reading through. And I read my chapter today. No, but did you sit down and think about it for a little while? Did you ask God what in the world he was saying, and what is it he's trying to say to you? I told our guys in the Institute, you read the proverb, there's, there's most uh, the average number of 25 to 30-some uh, verses. Get you a verse out of that that God speaks to you that you need. Because all of us need something out of Proverbs every day. I recommend uh, that you read whatever the day is. Read that proverb. It's the third, read the third proverb. Second, read the second proverb. It's the 30th, read the 30th proverb. You've got to have the principles. You're never going to have a... In fact, he says... That, no, you know the only time the word success is used in the Bible? It's used to connect with reading and meditating and doing what it says. I got our, our institute class uh, memorizing uh, Deuteronomy 5.29. This is God's prayer request. Are you with me? 
And that's, that's pretty important. Do you think God's prayer request? It says, oh, that they might fear me always and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and their children for Well, I think that's something you'll pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Moses is trying to tell him, I'm going to get to it in just a minute. Uh, what, what he expects you to do? We're talking about a successful house. It's got to be your, your rule book, your guide, your help, the Bible for your house. And listen, the Bible for your house is just as real. And just listen, do you realize how important it is? He compares the books and he compares the book with your name written in heaven when you get saved. Don't you think that's a pretty important book? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't wait to get it. I'd like to see where my name is in that book. But this book is how you find out how to get in that book. To have a successful house and home, you must have God as the priority. You must seek after God's will, God's worship, and God's work, that in all things he may have the preeminence in your house, or it's your house. Solomon says, I can't build God a house. I can't do it successful. Look in Deuteronomy chapter 6. I give you a, a, a Joshua 1, uh, 8. You ought to remember that. The only, the only place he talks about success in the Bible is by following the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 6, right after that verse, uh, I, I quoted to you, it's quoted a little bit, oh, that there was such a hard man that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always. It might be well with them and their, with their children forever. I think that's a pretty good prayer promise that's given, a pretty good thing to take for your family. Deuteronomy 6, there's a portion of this where every Jewish person has written in Hebrew, and they have it in a little box on their doors called the mezuzah. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's on, their, on, their, on the side of their door. They want the blessing for the house. They took this literally. Right. Verse number 3. Well, look, look in verse 2. He talks about the judgments. He said that thou mayest fear the Lord thy God. Yeah, fear the Lord. We're talking about that. There's a lot involved in that, but fear is involved in it too. To keep all his statutes and his commandments that I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life, that thy days may be prolonged. Don't you think? God knows what he's saying. He, you think he's just shooting, shooting this out. Well, you want to live a long life? Then don't. Do what God says, it'll be prolonged. He says the same thing about honor and obeying parents, that your days may be lengthened. I want my days lengthened. I don't want to cut them off. Verse 3, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. And I'm going to tell you something. We're not Israel, but we're in a land that floweth with milk and honey. We still are. Verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. That's the verse, first five of the commandments wrapped up in one. Verse 6, the Ten Commandments, that, that are all wrapped up in that, that, that first one, verse 5. And with these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Now, he's going to give you some instruction. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Thou, not the school, not Miss Cindy down at the cup of the house. She's got to try to straighten out what everybody else has left out. That thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Who? Mom and dad, that's who. That's right. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Well, when you talk about the Bible, when you talk about the principles in the Bible, when you talk about the, uh, the words that said in Proverbs. And when thou wakest, by the way, uh, it's good to get up with a prayer. Appreciate that one commentator has been dealing with stage four cancer. And, and uh, they said, they asked him, they said, Rush, how are you doing today? He said, I got up this morning and thank God I'm alive. And when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, that's an awful lot of talking about the Bible. Well, preacher, sure might talk about the Bible all day long, but it'd be good if you'd mention it once in a while. By the way, I, I, I think that we, we've messed this up even in schools, where we, we think if we try to teach them uh, good mathematics and, and uh, good penmanship and good 
penmanship do they do that anymore? No. no. Uh, they teach them good penmanship. How are you going to read the, the old documents? They're all written. And also the titles. Did you know that? The titles you had, all that was handwritten back in the day. It's, and they've got a record of it downtown or in where the county seat is. It's, still, it's handwritten. Uh, you, you, you got all this stuff and you're going to teach them the mechanics of that. But if you just sprinkle God in a little bit, you, that's, it's, you're set up for failure. Or at best, you have an educated criminal. He said, I'm reaching, he said, when you talk of them, he said, when you walk, when you, listen, do you know every opportunity you have should be used to teach your kids about God? I'm talking about sunrise and sunsets. We, my wife and I, the common in fact, we, we, we noticed that the, uh, the that moon and there was uh, the Mars, the red planet, you could see it had a tinge of red in it. It's out there. And we saw it this morning. We walked out there early this morning when it was still dark uh, to see it. It's the glory of God. And the God that's controlling all the, 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 the planets and the uh, solar system. And uh, the, uh, my kids, they send me, love to send me pictures of mountains. One of them came back from vacation, sent me ocean pictures when they visited. And they me, I met, uh, just a week or so ago, they sent me a picture of a, of a sunburst and the, and the, uh, uh, when, when the sun set, a beautiful sunset. Come on, look at the colors. They took pictures of it and sent it to us. And my comment back was, the glory of God never ceases to amaze. Amen. A sunset, a sunburst. Uh, George Griffith sent a beautiful picture of a sunburst in the clouds. It looked like Jesus is coming back at Camp Victory. Rainbows. Rainbows are a good time to teach about the covenant of God. Yeah. And thunder, uh, the, the voice of God, the power of God, <laughs> stormy winds, the glory and might of God, and, and the beauty that we see in nature, even as bad as what we've messed it up. I'm talking about there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a danger in leaving God out of, of our family life. I'm talking about our work and our play and vacation. You pray about jobs. You pray about school. You pray about tests. You pray about all that. And listen, if we put work or play or vacation or relatives or birthdays in a priority in front of God, I'm talking about the worship of God. We're making a grave mistake. How in the world? Listen, use every opportunity to teach your children about God. It's why you plant a garden. And it's why, why you explain to them about flowers and the birds and that, the insects and all that God's done, how God keeps that all together. You're going to have a successful Christian family. You have to spend a lot of time explaining to them how good God is because I'm telling you, the world, the internet, everything else is going to tell them there is no God. Yeah, that's right. And the reason we act, act like a bunch of animals is that's where we came from. We're all a bunch of animals. My folks used to say it, and they're, they're all shacked up like a bunch of barnyard animals. We get better sense of that because we've got God. Your home should be a refuge and a sanctuary, a safe place for children. And teens appreciate one fellow said that their house was where they, they wanted their kids all to bring their, their friends over when they came over. And they'd have a good time when they came there and they cut up with them and played with them. And they carried on with the neighborhood kids and keep an eye on them and helped them when the neighborhood kids weren't doing right. I got a promise that I have that I have faced for our family. It's Proverbs 14, 26. It says, In the fear of the Lord is a strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. My children, I think they're all special. I think they're all good. Love the grandkids and all that. But they all got their faults and failures and sins. But when it gets down to what we call where the rubber meets the road and, and some major problem or catastrophe or difficulty or accident or wreck or hospital, even if they really haven't been living for God very good, you know, you know they know where to go? That's right. Go to God. And get a hold of mom and dad and ask them to pray. Mm -hmm. Your children need a place of refuge because just the, the, the events of life is going to hit them sooner or later. Mm -hmm. I'm, talking, I'm, I'm talking about a car wreck accident. We've seen some horrible things <clears throat> of no fault mm -hmm. of the person. I'm thinking about this 
this uh, a friend of ours that uh, they were they were driving to a to a meeting and a dad was in the front seat and the son was I think 17 years old and and he was driving with dad and, and doing everything the way he was supposed to do it. Mom was in the back with with daughter and uh, a semi truck ran a, a red light and T boned him, killed the boy instantly. I didn't quite recover from that. Well, fortunately, the boy was active uh, in the sports. He was, he was in a Christian school. He was active in the sports and part of the school. We had a hearing service site now. They didn't create any sudden delay somewhere. They had a funeral service. With all the kids in the school, and all this affection of teenagers died, killed, seemingly no fault of his own. They said they packed out that, that, that gymnasium. There were six or seven hundred kids there. A number of kids got saved and gave a testimony, a testimony of that boy. But mom and dad still got a tough way to go. Mother was all kinds of broken bones. The daughter's all banged up. You know, a place for Bethlehem is one of the time like that. What do you do if you don't have God? Mm -hmm. Not careful, you get mad at these so called God that you worship. Do your children have a place of refuge? God needs to be a priority. They need to have principles. They need to have a place of refuge. Everything you tell your kids shouldn't be yelling at them. They need some time where they can talk and bear their hearts and not, and not be penalized for it. Let me say this you need to have the protection of God. I'm talking about hedge. You know, that's that's what uh, Satan told God about Job. He said, You got a hedge around you, know, nobody can touch you. Thank God for the hedge, thank God for the hedge. God gives you certain hedges. Gives a husband and a wife a hedge in a marriage. Yeah. Will yourself out? You and Satan have a good time. You got a you got a hedge of a family, it's an umbrella. God gives a I, I, I told you I know your parents aren't perfect. God help. They're born, uh, they're, they're just like their grandparents. I have a need. They got all kinds of problems. Everybody does. But God blessed that hedge and promised to protect that family. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't think Jacob was that great of a that great of a father, but he sure had a good God. Now, Abraham made some great mistakes, but thank God he had an altar and he had God, and uh, God helped him through those terrible, terrible mistakes and sins that he did. But there ought to be a there's a hedge of protection around your home. By the way, there's a hedge of protection in the church. Yeah. Leave the church. So, mm -hmm. you're fair game for Satan. <clears throat> Bad enough dealing with Satan as it is when you're in the church. Let him deal, deal with it when you're out. You got free reign. You're not hearing any preaching, not hearing any Bible, and not praying, not spending time with God. Satan says, he, oh, I got him. We're talking about a protective hedge here. Your marriage home, your church, your family. It's a place of refuge. Home should be a safe place. But sadly, we have to watch that like absolutely, you have to watch it, I mean, uh, uh, more fierce than, than, than you, I mean, you have to watch that more fierce than you would with your little kids downtown by themselves, wandering around at 9 o'clock at night. Because of the internet and the video. It's all right there. And it should be open and accountable to everybody. And we hide in the internet. Electron no electronic device should be off limits to anybody. I'm talking about the kids to the parents, husband and wife. Let me say this and, and move on quickly. We're talking about things you've got to have to have a Christian home, the principles, the protection, the priority, the word of God. Your partner, your spouse. I'm the preacher. I tell everybody every time, thank God for a spouse that warns me of things I'm not aware of. Mm -hmm. Situations that I'm not a, don't understand. You need to pay attention. She has helped me in some of the things I was ignorant of. You must have God's forgiveness. Yeah. Amen. 
There's no couple, no family is ever going to make it. The whole, I love the whole family now. He's in chapter 4, the great pastor. Let's go ahead and turn there. We're talking about God building the house. They labor in vain, except the Lord keep the house. The Lord giveth his beloved sleep. As arrows are the hand of a mighty man, I don't have time to cover all this stuff. You're the one that you're the one that makes the arrows, you're going to take the battle. There's a, that to you. And you're talking about your children, how, how you raise them, how you train them. Uh, and like I said, just because they left the house doesn't mean you're through training them. They still need you to be faithful and powerful. Love them one another. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, would, would you look, uh, uh, look at verse uh, 28. Boy, I spent a lot of time on this. Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hand, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. You work for what you get for crying out loud. Nobody yeah. owes you nothing. Yeah. You work for it. And then you do it to be a help and a blessing to others and show the goodness of God's been to you. Uh, verse number 29, it was amazing. I don't know why I was thinking about, uh, about the colonel who fried chicken. Uh, he said he spent his whole life trying to make money. He spent the last part of his life after he got saved trying to give away all his money. He said, verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. God is not in that. But that which is good in the use of edify the name of Mr. Elias and to the pure. So I'm not your family. Verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed in the day of redemption. We talked three seconds about redeeming. We got saved, we were redeemed. And we're waiting for that day when Jesus comes. Verse 31. Let all, here we are, let all bitterness. Because you're going to have wrath and anger and clamor. That's that nasty speaking and that evil speaking to be put away from you with all malice. Put it away. Don't do that. That's not the way you should be communicating in your home. Mm -hmm. Verse 32 And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. <coughs> it's amazing. I once thought to him, I can never forgive them. I said, Well, Jesus forgave you. You like his forgiveness? You want him to show you the forgiveness of God? Right. God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You ought to get ahead of that for you. Well, I, I saw it. I, I saw it today as a sign. It said, it was a, a sign for attorney, I think. It said, no justice, you know, K-N-O, yeah. uh, no justice, no peace. Yeah. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. No, if you know justice, you know peace. No, you don't. You better know God. Uh -huh. And you know peace. No Jesus, no peace. Not justice. You do not, there's not a person in this building that wants 100% accurate justice. Mm -hmm. We talk about it all the time for those that committed some bad crime. But for every sin you ever did, you want justice. You're going to be in hell over and over again. Mm -hmm. We have to humble ourselves before God. Who do you think you are? Jesus forgave you from the cross. Mm -hmm. Verse chapter 5, verse 1, be is uh, be therefore followers of God with your children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. You like Jesus being long suffering with you and hath given himself for us an offering, a sacrifice for a sweet smelling Savior. Mm -hmm. You want your house to be successful, you're going to have to have God involved in your house. And I'm not sitting out here preaching some nice sermon. I believe it. I watch families. My wife has put up with me for. 49 years. <laughs> Amen. But there's forgiveness. There's encouragement. And there's a peace and a love that we have now that we thought we knew about 40 years ago and now. Because we haven't seen that each other in every situation of life. Giving you a good wife. I want you to help her with it. Amen. I don't mean tell her what to do. Oh, no. You just say that. You tell her what to do. Why don't you tell her what you'd like to do? And the husband kind of wife you'd like to do. Isn't it interesting that Jesus illustrates the husband and wife relationship as a relationship?
love your wives as Christ also loved the church. That's how you're supposed to love your wife. It's not hard to submit to someone like that who died for you. I was so very privileged to people forgive me for being somewhat personal. A so great privilege to have a mom and dad return to Christ. When I was very, very, very young, I took us to church. They were expected. I remember at a little way home, she talked to us. She said, oh, I wish our parents were like your parents. I said, no, oh, yes, let us stay, let us stay, let us stay back in church. I said, are you kidding? I said, if I wanted to, and I was wicked, I could give you a whole legal list of what my parents did wrong. But I don't talk about what they did wrong. I don't know what they did right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My precious wife, I didn't know she was looking up to me because she comes from a difficult family with uh, all kinds of names you could give her. She saw my mom and dad. She saw my mom like that. Well, they disappointed me much. She thought she married me. She might get home like that. But in the second case, I'll walk work to her from that. But thank God for the testimony. My folks love God. I love God until they weren't able to go to church anymore. So they were so sick. And, and it, was a, it wasn't a contest, but it was a, not even a competition, but it was a concern by my two sisters and myself, which, which one's going to get mom and dad? Not which one had to take them in and take care of them, which one's going to get them? And we all mentioned that all of us, our kids are all grown. And mom and dad, you're going to need help. You're going to need somebody to spend some time with you. And we sure ain't putting you in an old nursing home. We want you with us. And you gotta, you got to stay with one of us. Uh, so which one do you want? Well, that's where you want me. <laughs> no, they said we'd like to stay with my sister and father. And I told my sister and father, I said, anything you want from mom and dad, and you knew how to ask me. She would talk, Chris, Chris is it okay if we do this? okay if we do that? You know, she's hanging on their money. And I said, I trust you. I've seen everything to do, and mom and dad are happy. You, dad wants it, you get it. Mom wants it, you get it. Any way possible. And God bless me. God bless my sister. I gave her a special relationship with my mom and dad before they passed. But I wonder if mom and dad hadn't really lived consistently for a and raised a bunch of rebellious kids. I usually tell folks, I said, you know, you better be nice to your kids. I'm going to pick out your nursing home. The truth of that, we, listen, you have an opportunity. I don't know, a lot of us have done We're not brand new young couples. But you still have a chance. You still have an opportunity to do the best you can for God. Every head back. Father, we come to you. None of us can come with some great example of anything. You are the example. You give us the Bible principles, the priorities. God, all of us need help in our family. All of us, grandparents, everybody. We all need help because we're prone to wander. We're prone to sin. We're prone to our own feelings. We're prone to anger. We're prone to frustration. And we're going to meet you one day. And you're the one who put us together. We so find the life, find the favor of the Lord, Lord Jesus. What you said. You said, as, the, as, as, as Christ loved the church, so the husband loved the wife. And as we, were in, in, and we would endure suffering like Jesus did, that we can endure things with our family. Take what you've given us, apply the Bible principles of prayer. God, put that hedge of prayer around our families. God, how desperate we are today. Speak our hearts, Lord. And then, Lord, I cannot help but close with this that you want everybody in your family. Lord, we're all we're your creation, but we're not always family. We become your family when we trust you and accept your free gift of eternal life. Help us not to miss that. We can talk about the family all we want, Lord, but if we're not one of yours, God, the angels don't even understand that. 
help us to trust you. And then, Lord, help us to believe you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand, please. Uh, what, uh, what, John's going to lead us in five, six, two. I think that's just as I am. That's the way God wants you to take it just like you are now. Come, we're going to have an opportunity for you uh, to uh, come to the altar, to pray, uh, spend some time. Make this, make this worship day count. You come as Brother John leads us. 562, just as I am. Just as I am. Science never, true science never contradicts the Bible. Oh, yeah. The Bible's not a science book. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. We need God. Yeah. We need our church. We need each other. Thank you for coming out today. Uh, we're going to sing on so glad in the heart of the family of God. We'll have a prayer, go to the house. And uh, you that are traveling, we pray, pray for you. And most everybody here, as far as I know, Except for a couple of visitors that I know will come and I pray for you in general. You've been prayed for today. I'm going to pray for you again tomorrow. And uh, you drive safe and be careful out there. Don't listen. You can't have a Christian. You can't have a, a successful family without God. You can try. You can do good things. But it's not going to be the same. Leave us one time.
Help us to better serve thee and to raise our families for thee and for and have a love for our brethren as we should, Lord. Guide and direct us, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.